Sub hornies, time for another quad, is it? Always is. Right, so, um, I build bloody heap of these and uh, without any, any standards in this, but then I kind of want to go start going to national drone races and so I have to have some sort of a standard like the VTX power and this and so this one I will be building for the 180, 180 size class so that's the only plan that I that I draw basically a simple cross and some circles with a compass that's my propellers and the rest of the stuff I just splatter my gear and visualizing so uh, by by popular request I will take some time and effort to record all the building process so I'll be doing everything from the very start and and I will walk through which uh, what goes on in my mind why, why am I doing this and that if so if you just want to see a finished product just skip to the end of the video if if not then you're in for the long ride make yourself some popcorn and let's go uh, that's my previous 180 size quad with a 1306 motors on a tree cell I, I kind of slightly lack of power so I just wanted to go for a four cell turbo power and like simple cross or bits and pieces it's not cool enough for me anymore i have to be i have to be acting a boo-boo so i just i just want to go decided to build this one like the hot rod style where my as you can see here's my gear placement bar is going to be on top uh, cameras at the back so um see how will that see how will that get on i will be building the style of this one uh this is the 220 size and it's and it's rock solid. The frame weight is only is only a hundred grams. Well, this one was a little bit fail. I didn't like the tilt motor. So no, never never mind that. So the battery will be sliding in. So I have to start. I have to start from the battery. Um, basically, I don't like the standard batteries because they bulky. They bulky and they big size. So I just I just buy my other batteries and then solder myself this is the four cell solder from a six cell you see how thin there is and so for this one i bought some 1.25 amps uh 30 30 c discharge three cell batteries i'm gonna i'm gonna take them apart cell by cell and i'm gonna solder four cell pack once i have this one then i can start drawing then i can start drawing the plan to cut from fiberglass so i have these batteries stripped off so i will have i have four batteries so i'll make three four four three cell batteries i'll make uh three four cell batteries have this stripped off so the three batteries are good i will solder i will solder on so the one battery i have to split cell by cell so just using high wattage siren there's a um, hundred hundred watt siren here because simply it, it heats up it heats up faster and it doesn't overheat the cell Next step is to check after splitting the cells. Next step is to check what's the where is my where's my positive and negative here. I desoldered the power leads and the balance balance plug. I will solder my own. There's one of the reason is look at the blob in here just for the balance leads it's that size of a blob for the solder I left one there just to show you I don't like like through the, all the blobs there will be a few grams or something two grams one gram still a bit overweight so three batteries are uh, three cells are soldered and then I stuck on the one cell and now I have to solder solder that one and start soldering power wires I soldered the packs inside Lucky enough, I had uh, a little bit of uh, spot welding on the aluminium plates, so uh, one pack is good. Uh, the other two packs, I have to. That's my that's my positive. I have to solder the on the aluminium tab. Now I don't have a I don't have a spot welder. That's about time to make make myself one. So basically, I'm using the solder it paste aluminium 
which is uh, there cannot be any flux or anything like the solder iron has to be clean and all you all you all you have to do is heat it up and this space this space becomes a this space become a solder joint basically now it's a tricky with the battery not to heat it not, not to overheat the battery but she did it before and it worked Clean, clean. No, there you go. Soldered an aluminium. It was a bit of a nightmare. <sighs> that shit stinks. Now, once that's soldered, I can solder the normal, the normal flux. I'll just clean off that one and that and that melts together with the aluminium soldered paste now there you go I will be reusing the same wires these are the 16 AWG wire gauge basically um, I have my test here motor motor prop test data uh, maximum at full throttle it draws 9.06 amps so that's 36 amps so 16 16 gauge wire should do because it's gonna be it's gonna be very short plus plus uh, where the uh, the the power wires is gonna be short as well so it should do 36 amps should do enough I don't like when the wires coming out of the batteries on the side because when I want to battery mount like this, that's a bloody thingy and so I'll do the balance here in the middle so my two wires be coming out in the middle, shorten out this one and of course every single time I do something I'm checking straight on and checking and checking and checking because I don't want any fireworks in here. Time for balance plugs. Um, these are the five pin servo connectors. There's a four cell, so I need a I need a five pin. I make my own plugs because I don't like these ones. They are they are too bulky for me. So I can salvage 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 mishkuji little pieces of little pieces of wire that that they're all I need. So Should be probably getting a crimps or something special tools but doing this for years and years so even before I started multicopters for the airplanes and so hands are not shaky that'll do me Now, there you go. Now I have to do red one on the outside and I have a have a little have a little silicone wire then I do the, the rest of them and check in of course while soldering. Solder the balance plug. Um cut these one, one longer, the other one shorter. Make sure they don't touch each other and, and on the contacts I cut a little strip of the previous battery. A little plastic also at the back so it's ready for heat shrinking I actually found this one which is a little bit shorter but it pretty barely goes on like you have to you have to lubricate and you have to massage it for it to stick it in isn't that always like this huh Let's see what happens. Hide, 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 hide.
that's more like it. I got my batteries ready. There's one, two, three. All nice and little, little tiny, no extra wire sticking out. So that's basically how I start my copters. I get the motors, put on the stand, get my prop test data, and then I know what kind of batteries do I need. So looking by the size, make sure they're not bulky and they're not heavy to make sure, make sure it fits. Um, this little boo boo was uh, 230 grams with this battery, which is 77 grams. So the four cell, the four cell turbo boo boo will be with the 180, 1804's uh, RCX motors. And the battery we have here, 120 blah 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 grams. So that means, that means my 180 size quad will be. 50 grams at least 50 grams heavier so that leaves us 280 grams plus there's a heavier motors than the 1306s and there's more of a more of a more of a scale is gonna be so basically I'm aiming for 300 and a little bit so if I'll get to 365 grams all a flying weight I'm gonna have 4 to 1 uh, power to weight ratio so hopefully I'm gonna reach 365 grams because uh, uh, my 18s or 1804s on the 4 inch bullnose props uh, got me 9 amps at max and the truss is 365 grams so we'll see now this is my favorite part of the build of any copters, any copters that are built. Basically, um, spreading the gear all over the place and visualizing, uh, drawing and designing on the. There's a sticky paper ready to ready to stick on a fiberglass. So as long as I have as long as I have my batteries, I know the I know the size of the batteries and I know the weight of the batteries. Um, the frame will be semi open. It will, it's going to be a brace on top, but it's still, still going to be semi-open. So I decided to go with the for the battery to slide in the cage, rather than having have it on a strap because I need because I need a bit of a structural I need a bit of a structural support. So the battery is going to slide in there. There's going to be the 10 mil tubes in there. Um, that's going to be my front grill goes in there. Uh, the main plate will go will go along. So basically my my Afro Mini will go in here. On top of Afro Mini, I will have my Hawkeye VTX 200 milliwatts. That's plenty. Uh, basically, then the the wire will come out. The uh, RG wire for the for the CP antenna will go in here, and antenna will be on top. Camera will be camera will be the rear seat view. So basically, my uh, Afro Mini and my Hawkeye VTX. It's like my engine bay, big block blown Hemi V8, of course, yeah. Um, ESCs uh, side by side. These are the easy ESCs, uh, 1620 amps. Uh, the new, the new boobus. Uh, they will be side by side in here. So uh, TBS RX will be here. Uh, antenna probably I will I will get out on the side. Uh, when I will have a when I will have a main frame, then I will do then I will do the top frame that will that will cover the cover the camera, and that will cover my CP antenna. So the main frame will go will go around, and the, my antenna will be protected as well. Um, it's gonna be tight as always. The ESC is gonna be soldered soldered here. The power wires. And it's gonna come out through the holes, through the holes in here, and I have a little plug connector in here. So we'll see. I'll see about the LEDs, the headlights, and the and the real the real lights will be on the on the main body. And uh, for the headlights, I'll see I'll see later what's it gonna be. All right, let's power up my turbo fret saw, and we'll give it a go.
Now before I start cutting with the fret saw, I'm drilling the holes in here. So uh, basically uh, the fret saw blade doesn't doesn't turn in the radius, so I'm drilling two millimeter holes. And for the things that has to go that has to go interlocking each other, so the uh, PCB not the PCB, the fiberglass is 1.6 millimeters thickness. So it has to it has to sink in, in there. So what I previously I was doing getting a one and a half mil drill bit and then fixing with the tr fret saw but now I got these carbide tips for the mill CNC and ease off ease off my work a little bit so I'm just getting the getting the hole in the router in manually and then all I need to do is fix fix a little bit with the with the file and that's it That's how it goes in here. All I have to do is fix a bit with the file. I got the parts roughly cut. The annoying part will be now is to peel that bloody stickers. Before I do that, before I start to refining it, you see how rough it is. Before I start to refining, I'm always checking whether whether it's gonna fit or not. Cause uh, sometimes getting the really in my head, some getting mixed up. Where's the boy? Where's the boy? Where's the girl going in? Make sure the boy gets in the girl, not the boy and the boy and the girl and the girl with a hole in the hole. Nothing wrong with that. I prefer the straight way. Um, let's see. This one, this one will go in there. Uh, just a bit. Uh, that's my. That's my brace gonna be here. That one will fit. This my grill. That's how is it gonna go in? I love this type of Lego. <laughs> and there's gonna come out, wrap around with a braided fishing line. Okay, we're good. Cutting was the easy part. Now the the best the best part is to, to refine the parts to make sure they like a CNC quality. And that's my files, bits and pieces, some sending blocks, and and here we go. Finish refining the parts. Now, when I send this one, I have to trace it there to make another one, the mirror image of it. So, basically, whatever, whatever finished, uh, whatever finished the sanding, there's still some sharp edges left. So I'm using the file at 45 degree, roughly. Everything all around, and that's what you're gonna look like. Unfinished. And finished. You see the difference there. 
So that's my CNC. People don't get confused. I don't own CNC or 3D printer. I got all my parts cut. Let's see what it's gonna fit now. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I found a little feck up here. Um that that bit doesn't fit basically because I marked it wrong. So it was supposed to go in like this and it's going like that way okay so I'll I have to cut this one I have to cut the other one okay well I'll, I'll finish the fine fitting when I have the when I have the main frame glued let's check the gear Okay, yes, she's gonna be there. That's my uh, Rex gonna fit in there, no problem. Okay, my camera that's gonna be CP at the back. Put the camera this way, put a bit. Yep, a plenty of space there. Um, Afro Mini video transmitter. I have plenty of space in here. I might do a little, little mock-up of exhaust or something. Let's check the battery. Okay, so the sideways it's going tight enough. After after painting, it will it will thicken a tiny bit, so it will be tight. Now, what goes to what goes the up and down? I left a little I left a little plane here because when I will have my ESCs, I will need a bit of a zip ties, so that will thicken. So it's rather having a bit a bit loose and pack it up with a little plate or something rather than having tight. And things that are not fit you have to force it as well for the as well for the tubes there's a tiny play in here as you can see all the way uh, because like the geometry matters between the motors whatever you do whatever you do the inside it doesn't matter it doesn't matter much so there's a little play in the tube so I can get my geometry right and there's there's another thing I noticed the slightly slightly wobble uh, I think because these two plates once you cut manually this tiny half a mil there or half a mil there and it's and it's twisting that way so the frame the frame is not it's not perfectly aligned it's not perfectly square um, what I will have to do here with this I will have to get my two plates to get my two plates aligned together and check for the holes and my crucial plates make sure these holes align that holes align and these and and the front ones basically okay right so let's get another part done and then I can start gluing it we can start gluing now okay I got it all fit now the way I glue it I have my line straight so I put it this one straight all I have to do is make sure it's all fair and square now she's all tacked so uh, if I'll go with the normal CA glue this is the cheapest from the pound shop or two euro shop like the five of these or two euros or something uh, mainly using that one so I'm using the other one it's the it's the very thin it's a super thin glue 
basically you can stick the parts together even if there's no gaps they will go into every little gap that it's possible so this one will this one will stick all the parts together and goes into every single little gap the whole plane the whole frame is glued around and here's my very favorite trick in a copter bills that I build I'm using basically a super glue and a baking soda some of the one of the comments on YouTube early on uh, gave me that tip and since I discovered it, the use of it is bloody brilliant when the parts interlock in each other you could do with a little with a little bead around so getting glue bead of glue in there and sprinkle some soda there it is dries instantly it's like using using epoxy with micro balloons and well the joint of course it's not it is not as uh, strong as epoxy with micro balloons but with epoxy you have to mess around mess around and even the five minute epoxy like it takes a while to you can send and this one dries instantly instantly And there you go and we have a little bit and this part this section is super strong so using the same as you can see this tiny little gap I just enlarged the holes to to make sure I can move a little bit for my alignment so I'm filling I'm filling these gaps as well with super glue and soda and then sanding them off There you go. Now everywhere using this one everywhere as you can see here's the wrapping around where the carbon where the carbon tube meets the flat surface. I wasn't doing that and it was basically on the impact it was sliding sideways. But once 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 that tight wrapped around it's super strong. It goes it goes nowhere. Now there's a 8mm tube and there's a 10mm tube. I'm gonna try to break it there. There you go. Still didn't break. Separated from the bolt. Now since I discovered that thing mounting the mount the mouse is bloody saves a ton of weight. Like I, I don't believe in flat arms basically because of our uh, flexibility and the strength of it there's no flex in the round tubes and that's the, that's the key to match the flat arms with the round tube so it works brilliant braided fishing line soaked in super glue it goes nowhere super strong yet very lightweight Time to glue the tubes on. Um, before I do that, I put the two tubes in here, uh, the aluminium ones, because my vice is not not wide enough for the carbon tubes to sit on. So I have here the flat surface, and then I have to check the square. I take the measurement from the other one, and I will have it all good. Before I put the tubes on, I drill the holes in there for the motor wires to come through I just have to align and make sure it's not it's not gonna hit the fiberglass the rest of our parts are in glued and ready for the next step before uh, before I put on the gray the braces I cut the little strip off for my Afro Mini and glue it on that will be with the double sided tape. I also cleaned it inside a bit of a 
uh, CA and soda thing is because uh, once it's not clean it gets sort of like a rough shape like a sandpaper once that done once they're done I could sand around the tubes uh, ready for braided braided fishing wire this what this part is not sanded I just want to just show you what it looks like not sanded and this is all all sanded part ready for wrapping around so my in my inside are done I can get this one I can get now this one's in glued it sanded around and start wrapping now the most time consuming part of my of my builds um, wrapping around with the fishing line I'm using just any in the fishing store this one is a uh, 14 kilos trend 0 0.2 0 0.21 millimeters in diameter now let's get it soaking in for the start Okay, now I got the first bit tacked with the CA, so it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't gonna it doesn't go anywhere while 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 I wrap. So uh, the which side to wrap on to wrap like to start to start wrapping from is it, it does matter because if I'll start here from the from the base then on this bit the line is just gonna fall off so the I have to start from the smaller radius and going upwards and it goes the same for the motor mounts as well let's get a good grip and off we go okay getting a slightly tension on it not too not too much once it's gonna once it's gonna be soaking in a ca it's gonna it's gonna loosen up a bit another thing tack it there Now, you will not go anywhere now. Once that done, getting my thin CA again. Also getting ready the a bit of a toilet tissue to soak it in the access whatever I don't need because um, I am applying some generous amounts of it. Make sure make sure it soaks in very well before before it starts drying. No, it's still all it's still all liquid, still not dry. <clears throat> no, with this one I have to be careful because if I stick it in like it's gonna dry, it's gonna dry instantly. So brushing quickly before before the glue dries. Got all done, ready for motor mounts. I will fine finish these when I just before painting when I do when I do the motor mounts. I have a special feature here for the grill. I'll show that later for you. Let's let's check in there what's the what's the frame waiting here. Just well, it's before motor mounts. I have here 52 grams, so that's not too bad. I guess the, it's gonna be a hundred gram frames. 
the other ones uh the most simple crosses are over 50 grams the other ones over 100 grams so i'm not raging about that now for the motor mounts i'm gonna do here are the 10 degree on the roll axis so i just got my motor and a draw in there to visualize so i know my distance from the prop to have my 180 size between motors and motors across so i'm gonna invert the motors here simply because i i can do the motors upwards looking upwards but if i want a 10 degree tilt it's gonna be my hitting the tube first of all second of all I will have my horizontal CG way, way below the prop line. As for the minis racing, like it does a, the best way they fly when the CG is right at the prop level. So I'm gonna invert. I'm gonna measure this one. So I have to notch out the notch out the, the tube a bit for the motor mounts. I have my measurements here. Uh, with this one, I will have my CG roughly roughly at the prop line because the battery is the heaviest the heaviest part of a of a copter now why should i till 10 degrees um basically from my from my previous from my previous card that's my stormtrooper as you can see if you're looking from the back there's a 10 degree each tilt and if you look it from the side it's all it's all in the line basically what with the with a little tilt the copter doesn't lose as much altitude once you're banking so i'm aiming this one for racing that's why that's why it's a true h frame and not the x frame the x frame it would be better for less inertia and mass for the acro flying um, loops and rolls and this and that but once once the inertia is big on the pitch axis it just goes rock solid rock solid so uh this one is just for acting the bollocks basically not for racing but when i started to go with this one i really like the way it flies because of that inertia on a pitch axis it goes forward like it's locked in and once you're making a turn it doesn't lose it doesn't lose uh altitude as much as uh, as much as others on the other hand with the tilt if you drop your throttle uh if you drop, drop the throttle when you horizontal it doesn't go in its it doesn't go in its own prop prop wash so there's less wobbles uh easier to tune pids it's just uh a lot more messing All right let's power it on okay now adjusting the the height i made this one for the my 10 degree tilt i have here three mil three millimeter zen mill route a bit i have it marked here with a um, sticky tape where's my where's my limit now before i do before i do that i adjusted the height with the with the calipers make sure i have the same height all four corners it was it was only uh sanded on flat it was only half a mil half a millimeter off but sure. let's do it right Next step is the motor mounts. I started, uh, I cut out these. This is the 2 mil carbon tube, and then later on, I will, uh, phew, not the tube, the plate. Later on, I will put another on top the um, fiberglass. So it's, uh, I need a motor protection basically since I started to doing protective motors, uh, my claws basically. I never broke a motor even with a head on collisions. So they're still gonna go as the motor is gonna be inverted uh, in the event of crash there's gonna be the tumbling so uh, it's gonna hit the motor first so instead of just doing my claws like I would need I would need more than more than more than two or three so instead of doing the claws I will I will do the motor protection like a tube wrapping around I don't have any carbon tube or any glass fiber tube 26 millimeters because my motor is 24 uh, 24 millimeters in diameter so i'm gonna laminate my own this is the split from from fiberglass cut out and split in the thingies uh found some tube which is 24 something something wrap the tape around to bring me 20 25 so that's hopefully gonna be enough enough space to to wrap around uh wrap around the motor 
Now, for the next step, I am prepared to glue my fingers on. Got my motor mounts cut, so I have these nice fiberglass fiberglass rings to go on. The one millimeter thickness. Start notching out, um, and I can start I can start gluing. That's for my that's for my motor wires to come out. Once I glue this one, then I'll double the other one on top. And that messing is to make sure I have interlocking one to each other to be to be stronger because if just simply I just fold this one uh, or put it on a double in there it's not gonna hold as it's gonna be only by little angle so all the parts have to interlock for the for the strength Got the motor mounts done, glue it on, I enlarged the holes into the oval shape a bit because um, it's a bit tight here, well on the motor I have only a millimeter and a half roughly each side so I want to make sure I'm to, to center the motor into the housing uh, for the for the bell not to touch in there. Uh, drill the holes a bit more for cooling and I know I know the first time I will have to clean the dirt from there inside I will start cursing badly. I marked the centers of the motor mounts uh, and clamp it down. Now I have to align the geometry. Let's check for fair and square. This one's on. Okay, happy enough. All the all the all the geometry is aligned. Let's get it tacked. I got it all wrapped. Here's what it looks like now. All nice and tight. I had the only bit few millimeters left the gap between the between the wrapping, so I just wrapped around. That'll do. Now I paint I ma put the masking tape on and I painted this uh front grill because I wanna do sort of like a little scalish feature. I got this aluminium from from Civ aluminium little plate. I'll glue this one on. Tape this one with the scotch tape so I can peel it off after and I can now sand it this one sort of. That's my grail for my hot rod. <laughs> Got it painted, uh, reddish primer, brownish primer, that's my fancy grill, <laughs> that's the way I want it. Um, that one was supposed to be chrome and it bloody came out like dark silver, it's not even silver, like dark silver. I, uh, to the paint, supposed to be shiny, shiny chrome and once you put the clear coat on, uh, it was supposed to be like a mirror image. But apparently not. I cannot. I cannot leave it like this because it's like a. It's like lead leaving a residue, and once I put on the clear coat, it became bloody silver. Ah, getting annoyed. Hold on, let me break something. No, I feel better. Um. So it is ready for electronics. Let's put it on the weighing scale. See what's in there. I have here nearly 82 grams 
so the top body on top was gonna be so uh, I'd say it will be a hundred grams and a little bit over still by the plan motors are in uh, before I sold it I tested I tested the rotation of it that's what these tapes are for so uh, to this date I cannot show you what kind of ESCs are there like uh, I've been asked not to not to advertise them so much uh, all I can say they go to the Immersion RC Vortex Pro so very fancy so far I'm liking these ESCs uh, uh, in, and slim ones sl slim ones as well that fits in a 12mm tube okay so I have my Afro Mini in uh, time to start soldering the motors now before I, before I did that uh, I checked all the ESCs, the rotation, and there's numbers. There's a two dots in here. That means there's my number two that will go on the on the second port on the Afro Mini. Also, got my wire ready for the five volts. I will get my five volts from my uh, Hawkeye 5.8 uh, gigahertz VTX. Uh, the same five volts will power my Afro Mini. Will power. There's gonna be the wire. Uh, will power my uh, TBS uh, mini mini receiver, and I will power my and I will power my camera. So uh, there's a uh, calculated by the milliamps that they're, they're giving. Like the the there should be enough. Should be enough. Okay, so. I chopped the I chopped the wires, so the other ones when I'll be soldering, I'll tread it through, chop to the right length. And that's my ground here. Soldering still in process. Now before I solder my power wires, um, I'll be running here four cell, and I want to have some headlights LED and the rear lights LED that run on 12 volts. So there's a little voltage regulator something like two dollars but there's a problem with it it is very noisy it, and basically what i will be having it here uh right underneath the uh, clover leaf antenna so i have to i have to get it grounded so i'll be using the copper tape and then and then i will have to i will have to ground it to to eliminate the noise so let's get it done Let's do the power wires. I chopped to the just about the right length of the I'm doing uh, first power wires. Then the uh, doesn't matter which order. So I got the um, the ones on the right hand side simply because my battery is gonna be like this, not to twisting them round and round and whatever. So I chopped them to the right side. I got them with the zip ties. So let's double check. Um, I have my I have my power wires to power my VTX. I have my wire in from my uh, step down module for the LEDs. And let's do this. No. Yes. I'll twist. I'll twist it in. Like I'm. I'm not. I'm not using any any PDBs because simply I believe is just a, a necessary weight if you sold the wire to wire it will be as good and it will be all reliable now when I got that in with the help of a with the help of a soldering paste with this big ass mother <coughs> soldering iron it's a hundred watt and it goes in a very high temperature and it flows instantly without without overheating the rest so how to be successful in FPV learn to solder that's the rule number one I'm still on my wiring so solder the rest of the wires they needed so that's my 5 volts will come out out of VTX and I grounded the audio wires as well. Immersion C recommends to ground them on the if it's not used on the 
on the video transmitters don't know if, if it's better than I need it also there's a video for the camera there's a power wires coming out from a buzzer I will do the buzzer mod later so and the VTX will come in in here and camera also install my uh, TBS mix, mic, micro rex uh, PPM OS bus don't know what I'm gonna run I tested I tested the antenna they come with the with the I think it's a halfway deep hole or something that's uh, 82 82 millimeters uh, from the grounding up and and there's another thing sticking out so I basically I don't want to hang out any of the wires so I tested this one I got I got roughly 10 15 percent loss of the range on the ground test basically just set up to 10 milliwatts power uh, dynamic range is off and then I went for a walk so let's get this one installed and we'll see snip snip that one I will be soldering I will be soldering my uh, clover leaf antenna directly on the wire no SMA connector so now we're getting there I soldered my buzzer there's bloody resistors or whatever the the thing is I got some help from from the lads because I'm useless in this electronic I left I left this wire a tiny bit longer just in case I will have to redo um, before I power up I have to I have to do the antenna on the VTX because ev everything everything is soldered if I'll power up without antenna it'll be a nightmare might have a little magic smoke or something no so it's not gonna be replaceable anything squeeze that in through once antenna in that's it the only way to replace that one will be to desolder or snip the antenna and solder again All right so um, as I said I sold on my own CPs I have here a cloverleaf calculator okay I usually fly on fat shark first uh, first channel so that is uh, 5740 done calculate okay so I have the whole length of uh, 54.92 and the band is at 13.73 okay so now I have to calculate exit yep now I have to calculate uh, the third band so I gonna multiply by 3 13 by 7 3 multiply by 3 I have here 41.19 41.19 okay now that I have a I have a full end of 50 50 well let's say 55 as it's gonna go a little bend to solder it on I'm gonna I'm gonna set it to 60 no 55 and I have four millimeters will do 50 so that would be 59 that will be my 59 and the wire the wire I'm using is uh, 0 0.8 millimeters from the MIG welder or a TIG welder or whatever you call it it's copper plated and it's uh, and it's a steel so you can solder it on good okay now I have my I have my little bits and pieces now the first band is it is at 13.73 we said it 13 point seven something something I don't trust digital calipers no I'm gonna mark my first bend first band marked then I'm gonna mark all the rest that, that was the 13.73 uh, now the, the the next band is gonna be 41.19 and then and then the last band is gonna be 54.92 and I will have a uh, four millimeters left for for overlapping here after I have my marks one two three now I'm starting to bend in 
okay so what I'm doing I'm bending not 90 degree but slightly in because between them two there has to be 105 degrees and the other one goes out okay this one this one has to be 90 degrees we'll get to that later check by the eye for straight okay so let's round them working from both sides now I have my leaf 105 degrees I don't have to check I, I know I know that it's 105 degrees build loads of these now I'm using the right hand polar polarization so I am turning this one 45 degrees towards right eyeballing I trust my eyes so there we go we have a leaf now uh, what I'm doing uh, before I start soldering, I have to I have to coat a bit of a solder on the thingies. Now that I have these coated, now there's um, there's an interesting part. I don't use any jigs, any anything. I usually solder the uh, the CP first and only then going to connector for whatever length that I'm gonna need. So the only the only thing I'm using is the close pack to pin it down while I'm soldering so uh, holding everything in my arms my hands and this one is there I might get it bend it to get an easier access right I have one in and just double checking for 45 degrees here before I go any further that looks about right now with that little thingy, uh, I have this bit soldered in, so that thing goes nowhere. Now, what goes the center line for the the whatever you call the signal? I'm just bending over, just just not to touch the center line because once I start soldering the other one, that one will get loose, and uh, the center line will hold it. Basically, if I'm gonna bend it bend it on a stretch or somewhere whatever i'm gonna start solder this one this one will move so i have here 90 degrees here and i have my 45 degrees here so let's get that one in now the center line is soldered so when i solder the other leaf it uh this one will hold and that one will not move this one is soldered everything is fine super and of course guess what i forgot i forgot to put the heat trick in there <laughs> so we'll have to isolate it somehow well put a bit of a cut on tape um Sometimes I do forget, but when I forget, I bloody I just couldn't be asked uh, desoldering and then soldering again. So I have here checked the bottom's all 90 degrees, this one's all square, the rest is 45 degrees, and we're good to go for the next step. Now to get there in the middle, make sure it doesn't come off. I'm using epoxy resin, so there's a two-part two-part epoxy resin the bloody dries in five minutes or something uh, I like when it dries fast because I have little patience on this matter but at the same time I have to work fast as well now that's still a little bit a little bit drippy so I'm using a tiny bit of a, a thickener it's like a very fine either cotton dust either the epoxy dust that thickens the resin and it's not as liquid anymore not as drippy now that I coated this one it's still a little bit dripping 
that's I did it so on purpose because I'm gonna get it now all smooth now here's what I have to do now I will have to keep on rotating it for be two minutes until solidifies enough not to be not to be dripping so I will have a all nice all nice round dot One last thing left to do. I got this clear coat. It's a PCB lacquer. Or using any other clear coat. If you're not gonna put any clear coat, the uh, the wire is copper plated, so it will start oxidizing and tiny little rust. So that's it. That's my CP done. With encased in the resin. It can bend uh, the middle one it's not gonna break and and if the wire bends I can just straight it up like on this particular it will be underneath it will be on the housing so it will be protected but in general that's how I do them more or less everything here now I have to solder the connectors and I can power it up to see check the video I can roughly set it up just have a look make sure everything is grand so plug it in this one because if you overheat that one, it might start moving. Whatever it's plugged in, it's not gonna move anywhere. So that's the moment of truth. Did I screw up somewhere with wiring? Are we gonna have magic smoke? Or we not? Okay, that's my 12 volts coming out. That's isolated. Insulated. Isolated. <coughs> Ta-da! No magic smoke! <laughs> no, I'm gonna have LED lights in here, like the proper headlights, and the rear ones is gonna be in the body, so the front ones I have these, they they are very bright, but they are a little bit too big. As on tree cell, they slightly too big because I wanna encase them, I wanna make like a they look like a headlights, not just the bloody LEDs attached. And a little bit too big because when I do something I always look what's gonna happen in event of a crash so I will have to get the housing so they're gonna be, be bigger in the event of crash they're gonna hit in there and they're gonna break off so I have to I have to get them smaller somehow and somehow by taking one of my kids torches yay daddy's not in a good box I got these LEDs and sunk in a carbon tube, soldered the wires and fill in with epoxy. So I'll screw them on. I have my holes for the wiring. I have to I have to tread the holes for the M2 screws and then we'll be good to go. No, the main body is more or less done, so I have to get them uh, the canopy. The hot rod canopy done. Uh, before I do that, I have to I have to make a bracket for the camera. There's a tiny little bracket. That's the width of my of my body, and it will go inside. So start mucking up a bit. Power up my Super Druka Mega 3D drawing device. Yeah, it's working. This way I will know my camera position and then I can start visualizing. It will be roughly there, about there. Slightly back, that's my CP. Slightly up. Um, yeah, happy enough. No, there we go. We have a hole for the camera's position. That's gonna be my camera. So I have a lines in here. So the, the body will sit on top in there and I'll strap it there with the zip ties. As I always do. Because the 
I don't want to get any screws in because in the event in, in the event of crash, basically the zip tie is just ripping off. It's a sort of a something has to give. Marking where's my camera position is gonna be. Now I have to do the camera to make sure I can tilt it up or down because I didn't lift it up in a year, so I don't know what kind of speed this boo boo is gonna give me. If it gives more speed, then I have to tilt the camera more up. If it gives me less speed, then of course the camera will be slightly less angle. Took some measurements, cut out the first plate, and before I move on, I'm just gonna double check whether it fits and will I get so my CP is not in the way. Right, I will put an end in there. It's gonna be covered. Um, window opening as my camera tilts slightly angle up. Rear window, LEDs at the back. Okay, looks like we're good to go. Got my structure in. I glued in the carbon strips in there because it will be sitting sitting on top in there. So that's what she's gonna look like. It's time to start refining. Now for the covering, uh, fiberglass. I got a bit of a bad quality because it splits very easy. So for now it works it, it works into my favor as long as I got the big sheet I still have to use it it works in my favor because I'm covering I don't have to mold my own fiberglass for little little sheet for covering oh, that's what it's gonna be there's a little angle it's gonna disappear into the flat so if I use the normal CA I I'm gonna run into the problems how to get it on before it starts drying so I'm using a thin CA when it gets in all the cracks that needed. Now you can see where it's glued straight on. Soaks in. Now the trick with the baking soda. Because that leaves a that leaves a little bead and the bond is stronger. Fifteen grams, eh, not too bad. I would rather have it very strong than very lightweight because uh, that's gonna that's gonna absorb the impact. I'll be sitting in there. Okay, now LEDs. Uh, I will have a rear LEDs, uh, rear lights, but then these are very these are very apart. So what I will do, I will solder my own. Let's double check what's the like tree cell in there. Yeah, red ones. Okay. I will solder my own. I'll desolder all LEDs. Uh, get these, whatever there is, or something. Solder tree in packs because they come tree in packs and they, and they are connected, um, not parallel, in line. Just a quick test. My LED lights. All working, ready for painting. So, just double check all the corners, nice and smooth, and whatever needs to be rounded. Got my canopy painted. All ready to go. So I have this OSD in before I put it in. Any, any before I put the body on, I always set up the camera to my liking. I never go for the stock setting settings on the camera. That's my just my preference. Because if I put the body on, I ain't gonna have an access to get this get this thingy in.
There's a little tricky part. Let me zip ties. Time to tie it up. Come out, come out, whatever you are. So, it's been a journey. It's had loads of popcorn, that is if you just watched everything. So, I'm more or less finished. All of flying weight is 375 grams. That's what I expected because I put in the bigger motors in there. Why did they go outside? Because I have to test my new copter. Right, so uh, I got Boris Better Fly 2.4.1 uh, drop down PADs, uh, the P's to roughly 4.0, crank up the rates to 0 0.5 ish, just get a little rough tuning, just put on the level, see what it has enough power on uh, 4 inch props. Yeah, P slightly too high. I will get it tuned. Alright, so that's how I build my quads basically from zero to up to the very last maiden okay see us next time